So in this second modeling lecture, we're actually going to create the first function of our neural network um, code. Uh, and it's basically going to be used to read the images from the M and IST files we just looked at and downloaded in the last lecture. All right, so obviously the first thing to do is to open MATLAB. Um, once you've done that, you can create a new script. Um, and that new script is going to contain our function. Um, I'm going to save that right now uh, in my MNIST learning folder. Um, and I'm going to call it read images. Uh, and you can save that. So here we are with our first um, MATLAB file to create our neural network. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the function that we're going to call in the main code when we're processing the neural network, when we're training it, and then when we're testing it. So this function is going to be called um, read images, like the, the, the name of the document. Uh, and I want it to output um, a matrix called IMGS, which obviously is going to contain the matrix containing basically the, the, the matrix that contains all the images extracted from the MNIST uh, documents. So here you go. That's obviously EMGS, IMGS, sorry, is the output. And then the name of the function is rim images. So that's how you call the function. Um, and in there, we're going to have as an input um, the name of the image file. All right, so that's basically just going to be a string of characters containing uh, the actual name of the image document we want to use. Okay, so it's going to be the training or the testing one. So let's now process the images. So I'm just going to comment that here so it's easy for you guys to look at it later and remember. Process images. Let's present it nicely. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, op uh, to use the file open function to tell MATLAB we want to open the file, the image file, uh, in a way to read it basically and uh, that it's written uh, in a format where we can read it in terms of bytes, right? So we're basically reading unsigned bytes. So the files are going to be contained uh, in this variable called f images, so file for the images. And, um, we're going to use the f open function. You can get more information about this function on the MATLAB website. I mean, it's very famous and it's used, um, you know, a lot in a lot of different projects. Obviously, every time you got to read a file of data and so on, which happens a lot in MATLAB, you're going to use that. Uh, you can see here the details of the function. So first, you can put the file name. Then it's a kind of permission. So first, we're going to read the file. We don't want to change that file at all. And then you have uh, the way the um, file is written, essentially, how should MATLAB read that file, right? So us, we're going to put the file name that we inputted in the function. And then we're going to have the read permission followed by our binary file. Um, I mean, bytes, it's full of, uh, basically, we're reading it, bytes. Um, and then we can finish that. So obviously, you know, in MATLAB, always finish your column, your, every time you create a variable or you call a function, uh, finish it with a column. Otherwise, it's displayed in the common window. Um, and the problem with that is that when you start doing very kind of, you know, mathematically heavy uh, projects where you have a lot of computations to be done, if you ask MATLAB to show you what's happening in the common window, it slows it down a lot because actually displaying this information takes quite a lot of processing power, right? So you want to hide that. Um, and then we're going to have a look. Um, we're going to create, sorry, uh, that first variable, uh, which is going to contain the magic number to see if that kind of file reading we're doing now with these parameters here um, is working well with the files we have for the images. So we're going to call that header, okay? That's going to be this, the variable is going to be called header. And this variable is uh, going to contain um, the basically the first byte. Okay, it's going to contain the first byte of the file that we open in F images, right? So the way to write that super easy: you use the function f reads, and then you specify the file you're reading, F images, and then you just want to move, you just want to read the first byte, and then. Uh, you want to go on and specify uh, what you're doing. So, in 32. 
and you can close that. So sorry, I've been, I've been, uh, I haven't been saying it uh, properly. I've been saying the first byte, but what we're reading is the first 32 bits. Remember, how, as it's written in the document, 32 bits by 32 bits for these first um, parameters. So we're specifying here that we're reading the first 32 bits, uh, and obviously that's four bytes, not the first byte on its own. So then once we have that information, this header is going to contain the magic number, which is the first four bytes of the document. And we want to make sure we're reading the file properly, so we're just going to do an if uh, condition asking if the header basically is not equal, oh, sorry, not equal uh, to 2051, then we want to display the error message um, that we're reading an invalid image file uh, header. Like it's not what we were looking for. In invalid image file header and that will stop the code right there and we can see like start looking at why we're not reading the file properly. All right. As you remember the magic number is 2051 uh, for all the file images. Uh, so the files containing images um, and for the files containing labels going to be 2049. But the 2051 works for the testing images and the training images. So we can then end that if loop, uh, that if condition, sorry, and then we can go on uh, to read the images. So the first thing we're going to do is read the number of images. So it's the second four bytes. Um, and that's basically same thing. We can basically use the function f read. Uh, we're using, we're basically doing the same thing here, right? So we're using the function f read to look at the uh, f images file, which is open here. Uh, and then we're going to look at the first 32 bits or the first four bytes. All right. Um, and that will give us the amount of images in the folder. As you remember, that's the second four bytes, uh, the second 32 bits integers, and it's going to tell us that it's going to be 60,000. Um, then we're going to do the same thing for the rows and the columns. Uh, as you remember, that's kind of the information we're given at the beginning before all the data is there. So I'm just going to copy paste that right there. And we're going to have the number of rows here. Um, and then I'm just going to type rows, sorry, uh, just to make it easier to type later. And then here we're going to have the columns. So it's very important to note what's happening here, right? Because as you can see, I'm always putting one, okay? Read, read one 32-bit integers. So there's a pointer actually in the file. So you open the file, all right? And then the file is going to attribute the first 32-bit um of the document, the first four bytes to that header uh, variable here, right? But then it's not going to go back to zero. The pointer is going to stop after this first uh, 32 bits. So when you call it a second time to read uh, the number of images in the file, uh, you don't need to say now I want to read the second position, right? You just say I want to read another 32 bits integers because the f read function already stopped after the 32 bits and then you go on right so basically imagine you have a punter and i'm like i want to read um the first letter uh of error okay so up you're here that's the first time you call the error fun uh, the f red function but then it's not going to go back to zero it's going to stay like that until you close the file okay and then you can tell okay i want to read the second letter so you just use again the same the same f read call to read the next letter and so on. So that's what we're doing here. We're moving 32 bits by 32 bits. So that's allowing us to get the header, then the number of images, then the number of rows, and then the number um, of columns. We can then start reading all the images. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create the matrix of images uh, so that MATLAB can fill it in faster and there's no errors when you start creating the actual array, so the matrix. Um, and that uh, you can just, when you create it, fill it with zeros. Okay, so to do that, you can use a function called zeros. Again, very useful in MATLAB when you work with matrices. Uh, and so specifically in the case of neural network, there's a lot of that. Um, and then what we're going to tell that function is to create a matrix 
uh, the size of our image matrix that we want to output from this function, right? So the way we're going to do it, we're going to have the first dimension, okay? So the rows of that matrix is going to be uh, the actual rows of the images, so the ones we, we got here, right? So we use that, that dimension. So we want the first dimension of this matrix to be the number of rows that we got from the file. Then the second dimension, uh, you can just use the space here. So the second dimension is going to be the number of columns. The third dimension is going to be the number of images. All right. So it's a three-dimension matrix, three-dimensional matrix. Sorry, I think you say it like that. Um, and sorry, let me finish the proper syntax. Double checking, I wrote it properly. Okay, yeah. So you're creating that matrix, uh, which is full of zeros, which has uh, the amount of rows we read here. So the same number of rows as each image. And then we wanted to have the same number of columns at each image. And then we copy, you can picture that as us making copies of this kind of square matrix uh, in a third dimension. So in the back of it, uh, from the number of the images. It's like we're taking, I don't know, little books made of 28 by 28 pixels and then copying them in 3D space, stacking them on top of each other. So we can just call kind of the image we want, image one, image two, image three, and then we'll just have the picture in the form of rows and columns already, you know, in the right orientation, in the right format and everything. So now it's all about filling up that matrix from the data of the file. So we can use a for loop for that because we know the number of images. We got it earlier. So we use a for loop uh, using the counter I uh, going from one to the number of images we counted earlier. Um, and then uh, Obviously, that's going to filter through each image. Like I said, it's going to open the first one and the second one. So that's sorting out that third dimension. Now, we also want to sort out the second dimension, which is the column. So we're basically going to go column by column. Um, sorry, actually, no. The way we're going to do it, which makes more sense, we're going to do it this like uh, reading a book, right? So we're going to go first row. Uh, we, let, we stay in that first row and then we do first column, second column, third column, fourth column, right? We fill each column for each row. So then we need to have a look at Y, um, which is going to be the counter for the number of rows, which is going from one to the number of rows we got from the document. Okay? And then we can just fill in our matrix that we just created. Uh, so here, what we're doing, all right, is we're looking at the first row, okay? So that's going to fix the row. It's going to be okay. At the first iteration of that for loop, we stay in the first row. And then you can use um, the basically the double dots to say that that's, we're not giving it a specific dimension, right? You, you got to fill that first row with all the data we're going to give you now in that function we're going to call now, okay? So it's saying it's not the first, it's not the first column, it's not the second column, it's all the columns we're going to give you now. And then we know in which image we're at, so we can use the counter I here. So it's going to tell it, okay, first row, first image, or second row, second image, wherever we're at. Uh, and then now we're giving you all the column information, okay? Sorry. So column by column, we're giving you basically each column, all the data for that row, right? So then the way we're going to do that, as you remember, is the f read function doesn't go back to zero. Uh, it's like a pointer that keeps moving forward until you close the file or you tell it, uh, you tell the pointer to go somewhere else or go back to zero. So we're again going to use the fread function. I'm just going to copy paste that. It's a lot faster. And in the fread function, we're reading the same file, which is f images. Okay. But now we don't want to do just, you know, the first kind of 32 bits. Okay. Uh, what we want to do uh, so the first four bytes is we just want to read the next byte, okay? But for the number of columns that there is in each images, okay? So we know that there's 28 columns. You can just use the variable columns we extracted from the file. So it's telling the, the, the effort function to look at the next 28 here. So that's what's contained by columns. But if it was six, it would be six. And we don't want to read 32 bits in figures. If you remember from the MNIST database, uh, when we were reading on the website, the 32 bits, so the full bytes, are only for the head header kind of information, so the magic number and all that stuff. Now we're reading bytes per bytes, and each byte 
is an integer, is, sorry, is 8 bits, okay? So the way you can encode that is by saying unsigned integer, uh, 8 of them. Okay, so that's saying we're reading integers made of 8 unsigned bits, all right? So now we're looking at um, 28, so basically, to recap, we're, we're looking at, let's say for the first iteration of this, we're looking at for the first image, so that's going to be 1, and then the first row, okay, um, so that's going to be 1, and that's going to be undefined, okay, and then the effort function is going to read all the columns, okay, so it's going to fill in that dimension all at once. We're going to get the 28 columns all at once. And then the Y counter first is going to keep progressing until we have 28 rows, so then you're going to be at 2, same in the first image, sorry, still in the, sa in the same image, so the first image, and now second row, and now we'll read the next columns, okay? So let's say that because of the data, the way it's presented in the in the actual MNIST, MNIST document, sorry, I keep pronouncing it wrong. Um, the way it's presented, it's basically the first 28 pixels, and then after this, there'll be the second 28 pixels, and each of these 28 pixels are rows. So you've got the first row all laid at once, and then we're going to read the second row all laid at once, and so on. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to the first row in the first image, filling in that entire row by putting the numbers in each columns of that row, and then so on and so on. So I hope it makes more sense than before when you're able to understand how we're basically reading that document. You can then end the for loop. So now we've done all the rows of that image with all the columns. We can then do that for all the images. Um, and then we want to uh, close the image file. So you just do F close, use the close function. And then our file is F, is contained is F in F images. And then you can just end your function. So very important here, this is what it's going to output, right? Here we're creating the output of that function that's going to be uh, right here. So every time you write uh, a MATLAB file, a MATLAB document, even if it's just, a, you know, something that's not necessarily a function, I always advise you to smart indent. So then it's just very easy to read it and see what's happening, right? So here we have the if, that's the inside of the if condition. Here we have the for loop, so that's inside the first for loop, that's inside the second for loop, and so on. You can then save uh, this function. We're not going to use it yet. Uh, we're going to use it once we uh, call the, the, the actual kind of neural network training whole process, right? Uh, so I hope that was clear enough. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. The next uh, lecture is basically going to be the label reading function. Okay, we're going to read all the labels. And it's very important here that because um, both test images, uh, the files containing the test images and the file containing the training images, they have the same magic number and they have the exact same format, we can use basically this function, read images, to read both the training set and the testing set. So again, thank you for listening, guys. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate.